Good morning, happy Easter everyone. I'm Pastor Tori, Senior Pastor at House of Power Outreach. Pastor Rita and I uh, just are happy to celebrate Easter with each and every one of you that's joined us this morning uh, for service. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we got a quick prayer request that we wanna, I wanna make sure you guys stay in agreement with me and and, and, and also just all the celebration that's going to be uh, happening throughout the weekend. Pastor Rita's just got great plans uh, set up for our children and, and just, it is just going to be a great time and just the resurrection of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And, and it's just, just a blessing just to be in this time to be able to celebrate the, the resurrection of Christ when everything else seems to be going down. So we're, we're obviously fired up and, and ready and, and just going to just give a time where we honor God and all that we do. Please go to our website at hopochurch.org and look at all different ministries. Pray over the ministries that are there. Uh, be, uh, uh, we, we'd be honored if you partner with us and, and financially and, and getting the gospel out throughout the entire land, and especially in Williamson County where we are, but into, uh, throughout the entire nation is where we serve. And so as we're going to pray, we're going to lift up Danny. We prayed over him uh, last week. We want to continue in prayer. Uh, the report from the doctors is, is one thing, but what we believe the report of the Lord. And so we're going to join in with Rick and Mary Ann. It's Rick's brother. And, and we just want to uh, pray the spirit of encouragement and, and believe for healing. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up Danny to you right now and work on it. We just thank you. We understand what the doctors have reported, but we also know that they're just practicing physicians. You are the great physician. Lord, we trust you, and we believe that Danny is going to come out on the other side blessed, healed, and whole. And Father God, we just thank you for your authority and your power over him, Lord God, that what may look completely impossible to the world and what may be impossible for the doctors is still possible through you and your hand upon him. So Lord, we just step back and receive the hand of God. We receive the miracle of God. And we thank you, Lord God. I thank you for bringing uh, peace and, and hope to the family. And, and, and Father God, on every turn, to let them know that we're in 100% agreement with them. Believing for your will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to preach about Jesus' flow. You know, it's a great part about Jesus. He flowed throughout everything. And, and part of just a verse that specifically points out the flow of God and, and the flow of his power. That, that the blood that, that, that it saved and cleansed us, you know. And so in John chapter 19, verse 32 through 37, it says, Then uh, came the soldiers and, and break the legs of the first two and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, for with came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. He knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierce. So God's word, I, it, just so powerful, especially we live in a time where everyone's trying to deny the Bible, saying that re religion's going to go away and, and just going to, you know, and, and Christianity is just going to, it's just so, this just brings just so much hope. Here's Christ laying on the cross. He's, he's there, he's dead. He's dead. And these guys got the opportunity if they want to deny the Bible and, and look back in the history, because the scripture has been spoken that did not one bone in his body, they could change it, right? They could, they, he's, he's completely vulnerable. They could change, they could break something on him and prove God wrong. But God's word is so powerful. Why Jesus laid there defenseless against men who are walking around with natural air and, and, could, and could do this. They could do it. They could have done it, but they can't because God protects his word. It's always just our message to people who come up and say, well, how do you know the Bible wasn't changed? This right here is more evidence to me than ever before. You know, I've seen this before, but even more before that if you couldn't change the Bible with Jesus dead, if you couldn't change the scripture, if you couldn't make it change, you couldn't make it untrue while he was dead in your face, <laughs> How much more can God keep it alive with walking, living, spiritual beings who's here to celebrate what God has done? How much more? 
how much more? And, and, and it, it so excites me because here it is, like he just said, it is finished. Dies there on the cross. They know what the scripture said. All of these, these are, these are religious people too. They know about the word and they got a chance to prove him as a false prophet. They said, this is false. This God thing isn't true. And they couldn't because almighty God protects his word. Protect his word. I, I believe it was Isaiah 55 and 11 said his word uh, came to, and, and accomplished where it was sent. It accomplished it. And, and listen, believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. It has not been changed. It has not been altered. God is powerful and can protect his word. And so as we look at this, it, it's that no matter how much advantage the world looks like they have, and these soldiers had the opportunity. Psalms 3420 is where it says this, that not a bone of him is going to be broken. You know, these guys, you know, these old atheists and people who are talking and, you know, trying to like, you know, it's not real. It's not real. Man, this was their opportunity to make it not real. But God's too big because God is not just a silent partner in this earth. He's not just a, a just a wandering weak spirit. No, he's powerful. He's powerful with it hanging on the cross. He's powerful. So here's what, what they did do. So Jesus' bones, when, that, that not true about breaking his bones, he, when he couldn't defend himself, but God protected him, as, as I said, they pierced his side because they couldn't break his bones and Jesus flowed on the ground. And, and what a mess. And that's the flow of Jesus was that they, they couldn't break his bones. So they, so they come back and they pierce his side. I mean, that caused nothing but a flow. What people think they're doing to you, what they think they're hurting you is causing you to flow. When things come against you and you still walk with God, you're, you're creating a flow that's going to create belief in your family and your loved ones and everyone that, that's around you. There's a flow that's happening. And as they pierced him, it said blood and water flowed out of him. Blood for forgiveness of sin. Water for the washings of our lives and that we're saved and we're cleansed to be celebrated by God Almighty. This is, this is happening while he's dead. This is happening while he's hanging there on the cross cross still making a difference why you look like you've got no options why it looks like you're not going to win you're still making a difference when you hold true to the word of God when there are things that are piercing you but can't break you circumstances come against you but it can't break you they can't break you they can't separate you from the word of God they can't separate you from the love of God you just keep coming you keep going because you have now understanding that that's just the only thing you'll do is make me flow even greater every attack is going to make me pray and worship even stronger it make me praise even louder it's going to help me celebrate it's all you can do because you cannot stop me Right? What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. So God begins to bless. So they pierce his side because they couldn't break him. What they thought was damaging God only exposed man to the blood of salvation and the washing of the word. In Genesis 2, 7, it says man is made out of the dust of the earth. So they pierced him and his blood runs on to the ground, runs on to what I'm made out of, runs on to man. It says that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh in Joel 2, 28. And as he's just sitting there running, they're, they're thinking that they're hurting him. We're damaging him. All you're doing is just showing that, that you're just basically prophetically showing a physical demonstration of what God was spiritually doing at the exact same time, was running throughout the land, running throughout the earth, touching every flesh, every part, everything that was created out of dust of the earth, which is all man, with the spirit and the cleansing of God is there. It's available as we make it available to every person. As you witness to people, that, that blood, that flow begins to just rise up and, and begins to minister to them. So don't ever, if you're close and you're witnessing the people, don't give up. You don't give up. The flow is going to turn. The tide is going to turn. There's going to be a message to that. So they, they when, when we take that, this is a message to us that even though things may touch us mentally, emotionally, and even physically, but they cannot break us when we keep our faith. And, and when you keep your faith, it just can't break you. You know, you have the heart, you have the hand, of God and, and God begins to consume and takes over for us. And so if, if you start to look at that and think about, I'm going to keep my faith no matter what. And that's what, you know, the world, that's what the enemy's after. He's after your faith. He don't, he don't want us to believe. He don't want us to uphold what God has called us to, but Jesus hanging there and you may look defeated. You may be looking at a circumstance right now. You look completely defeated and, and it's just piercing you and you just, just begin to let it flow. Let, let it flow that I'm going to love the Lord that God with all my heart, soul, mind, and body and love my neighbors. I love myself. I'm going to flow not only just for, for my situation, but my, my surroundings is going to get in love with God and, and, and experience the power of God. So in John 
chapter 20, verse 4 through 7, it says, So they both, so they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the, and the handkerchief that had been around his neck, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Um, so again, I, I got to jump into this about the folding of the linen cloth that covered his face, and one of the Jewish customs of that time was that when, when, you know, when the head of the house or the master of the house was eating, the servant would, would wait, would not dare interrupt him while he was eating. But when he got finished eating, there was one of two things that would happen. He'd get up or, and clean his hands and clean his face and, and clean his beard and take and, and just throw the, towel, or throw the, the uh, napkin down and then just go off. And, and that's when the servant knew that he was done. But if he stood up and folded the napkin, it meant that he was not done and he was coming back. Jesus folded, I just love this so much, he folded the napkin that covered his face to let us know he's coming back. He's not done. He's not done. He's coming back for us. So he goes through all that, all the other linens off to the side, but separate it was the thing that covered his face. Separated was the thing that covered him and, it, and it's folded. As if to say the master's coming back. He's not done. I, I, Y'all, listen, listen. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And he showed it even through the customs of the places where he is. And, you know, it's just amazing what people are willing to argue over. But Jesus did it under the, the uh, sentencing of their customs and under the authority of their customs to let them know how it was working. And he folded it because he's coming Back. He's not done. He's not done. He's going to take us up into heaven with him. And, and, the, and all of us, all of those who are there, we're going to get to meet those who, who served God and went on to be with the Lord. And we're going to be, man, I am just, that, that just blessed me because I'd never understood that before. I never read it that way before that he folded it to let us know, I'm coming back. I'm not done. I'm not done. And by, by the way, while I'm there preparing a place for you, I've strengthened you to be strong here. To walk in blessing. Don't give up. I don't know how long you've been serving God. And you're, you, maybe you're at that point of you're thinking like, man, you know, Jesus, you know, we've been saying he's coming back for all this time. And I don't know if he's ever going to come back. Listen, stay with it. Stay with us. Stay with us. He's coming back. He's going to return. He's not done eating yet. He's not done with all he's going to do and, and restore this earth completely for his glory. So they pierced him. And he said it's finished because he was finished with, with the dying and for him to get people saved and born again. And he came in and showed us one more thing when his resurrection is that I'm folding this because I'm coming back to get everyone. To rapture the people who, who love me, who serve me, who, who believed in me. And I, the account of Jesus, just let, leaving us message after message that, that I'm going to return. I'm going to return for my people and I'm going to take them up into heaven with me. I, I just think that that just <laughs> does so much for my, my soul. And so we want to look at the fact of what Jesus meant. It, is no, it gives us such great hope as believers. So I believe in Christianity as I believe in the sun. This is C.S. Lewis said this and he says, I believe in Christianity just as much as I believe in, in the sun. Uh, and the sun is risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Because it shows me, you know, John 33 says that, you know, unless a man is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. It is being born again that helps us see the kingdom of God. Not only do I believe in God, not only do I see God, but I see because of God. I see because of the light of God. I see because of the hand of God. Not only did the abuse not stop me, not only did the, the, the rape and the, did the attacks not stop me, not only did that, I can see Jesus still because of Jesus being in me. Because I see Christ, I can see. I can see clearly. Father, we just we just thank God. I thank God. I'm so excited about this Easter and, and just just what, what is preparing our hearts to understand and know. Fold up those things. Don't, don't let an attack make you throw in the towel. Uh-uh. Fold it up neatly like devil. 
You didn't even win this second. You didn't even win this minute. I'm, I'm coming back to eat right here at this same table, right here in this same household where things I may have, I may have let some things down. I may have let some things go. I may not have been my best, but I'm going to fold up because I'm going to eat right here and worship God. That's the devil loves to try to take spots away from people, try to make you believe that this was a, this was a place you don't want to go down this street because this is where something bad happened. No man, fold your napkin up and say no, because I got Christ, I don't have to run from a place. I can show up anywhere anytime under the authority of God Almighty and know that he loves me and cares for me and so it's a blessing to be able to see that so just as powerful as Jesus got up from the grave he will return for his people just as powerful it's it's gonna shake some things y'all it's gonna be in a place that we get to love God I want to move on in, in Romans chapter 8 uh, and verse uh, 10 through 11 says and if Christ be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of, of righteousness. And But if the spirit of him that raised Christ, raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit, by his <laughs> mortal body, by his spirit, and dwelleth in you. So it's the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. It dwells in us. It lives in us. That same get up when everything got on us and everything when we got down, there's a get up in us. And he left that for us. He's, he left that. He said, I must go away so the comforter may come. And he left that. And, and as Jesus prepared our heart, soul, mind, and body, he empowered us. He not only just prepared us, but he empowered us for the will of God, for the purpose of God, for the hand of God, for the glory of God, that that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. What, what, a, what a great message that, that no matter what, in Isaiah 54, 17, that any weapon that showed up, it can't prosper. Don't get all, don't get bent out of shape because something showed up in your life or something showed, showed it appeared. Just know that it can't prosper. It can't prosper. There's too much God in you. There's too much hope in you. There's too much fellowship with the Father to let this attack and isolation from the enemy even work one second in our lives. So the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in our mortal bodies. And it quickens us. The word quickens us means to make alive. Make alive. Go ahead and fold up your napkin in this last attack. These lighter fixed afflictions are but for a moment. But glorifying God works far more weight. It's far more weight to glorify God in these times. Uh, in, these, in, these, in these times that you'll have tribulation, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. He's so faithful. He's so honorable to trust. And, and as we trust God, know that that spirit that's in you. So Jesus resurrected. He got up. We watched and we saw where they, they he died on the cross, died before the other two criminals. They couldn't break his legs. They can't touch him. They can't touch you because the same spirit that was in him dwells in you. Can't be touched. Even though it looked like you're hanging out to dry. Even though it looked like people that, that should have been able, you should have been able to trust hung you out to dry. You're hanging there, but they can't break you. They can't break you. They get celebration of what been taken to in that burial part. And then as he got up, go ahead and fold it. Go ahead and fold it. You walk in that forgiveness. You walk in that purpose. So he left the power for, uh, for every believer to be restored in strength by filling us with his spirit. Satan and circumstances will bring threats for us to give up. But, the true, but they truly are light afflictions. And so they cannot maintain Jesus came all in so we could live all out and be prepared for his all-knowing. Jesus came all in so we could live all out. Don't hold nothing back. Don't save nothing for anything else. Don't, don't say, you know, well, I give God all of this, but I'm going to give this part of me over. Uh-uh. He came all in, all in, so we could live all out. He got all the way up. He didn't get halfway up. He walked all the way through. He didn't stop. He called us finishes. Philippians 1, 6, he had begun to go work with us and able to perform it. He's able to perform it and perfect in us what he started in us. And so he blesses us. So our prayer, God, have it your way. Have it your way, Jesus. This is your way, God, because as Jesus prayed, thy will be done. Have it your way. Thy will be done. Going through with all his will, going through with his will 
to do the finish and send God bring deliverance for generation. So Jesus got up and now we can go up in our worship freely in the peace of God. There's one thing, you know, we said these, you know, when I'm speaking at schools, a lot of people know how to suit up, but very few people know how to show up. And we compile that with a lot of people know how to act like a Christian, but very few know how to react like a Christian. Hey, look, show up, show up. That's what Jesus did. He showed up. But he left messages. I folded my napkin because I'm coming back. I'm not done eating. I, if you've never accepted Christ, I, I want, you know, get to church, get someone, a call in, email us, you know, but, but just receive him right now. Because he's not done. He's coming. And he's got a plan for you. He's got work for you. He's got serving up for you. But he's got a great life and love and grace for you. Lord, give us grace to trust you more. That sometimes we just don't, we struggle with our trust, but God give us grace to trust you like we've never trusted you before. And Lord, we thank you. We know you're going to come through for us. And so we bless God on this Easter, on this Resurrection Sunday, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My God will never leave me or forsake me. I pray for every lonely heart, every misguided heart. This is your day, your day to recognize. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray and thank you for each and every person that is praying with me, Lord God, and in agreement that as we pray, we believe that as you folded up that napkin and you showed that I'm not done, I'm coming back. For everyone that thought you might have left and abandoned them because of what they went through, I pray in Jesus' name they recognize and accept the custom of the folded napkin. Accept the flow that, Lord, that your blood and your water flows on them as well. It is not just for select few, that Lord God, that it is for every man. That you said, if I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men. So Lord, we lift you up. That I thank you, Lord God, that the saved and cleansed of the Jesus flow is happening through each and every one. People who thought that they were with you one time and may have messed up and, and felt like they can't, uh -uh, the flow never stops. And Lord God, I thank you that those who feel like they've been hung out to dry, let's show them that the same spirit that raised you from the dead, dwells in our mortal body. Lord God, we receive together. We believe and we thank you for this blessed, blessed and happy Easter. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you. I thank God for you. We're going to be receiving communion as you receive communion. You know, this year, the, 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 I mean, this part, we're just believing that God, like he did on the Last Supper, exposed Judas. Things will be exposed. You'll see them this, this time. And we want you to have a blessed Easter. Enjoy your day. And we'll see you next time.